All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Yu Xing. I work as a research engineer at FAIR on computer vision. And today I'm going to talk to you about Detectron 2, our next generation object detection platform. So what do we mean by object detection? Let's look at a video first. A few years ago, object detection was only about drawing the bounding boxes around each object in the scene. Today, however, with the advance in computer vision algorithm, we are able to do much more than that. Our models now can localize key points of human, it can predict their poses, and label each of their body parts. This is also called dense pose prediction. We can segment out every object in the scene, and beyond objects, label every pixel in the background as well. This is also called panoptic segmentation. This is what object detection is about today. It involves any task that localizes, recognizes, and predicting attributes for every object in the image. And today, we're open sourcing Detection 2, the object detection platform that produces this video. You might have heard of Detection, which is the object detection platform that we open sourced almost two years ago. We've been asked a lot about when we will have a PyTorch version of it. And Detection 2 is built completely in PyTorch. It is a ground up rewrite of Detection with faster speed, latest and more accurate models, and also a more modular design. Detection 2 has a higher training efficiency than our existing platforms. A complicated object detection model often contains many types of small operators or operators that work on tensors of dynamic shapes. Those are not often used in a standard component. That's why in Detection 1, we often faced a dilemma. We could spend a lot of time writing a CUDA operators to make it fast, or we can spend much less time writing the same thing in Python, but then it will run slower. With PyTorch, thanks to its vast amount of operators that's available there, we can move the entire training on GPUs and utilize better optimizations. As a result, the models now trained in Detection 2 can run two to three times faster than the same model in Detection. And it also makes improvements over MassCarC and Benchmark, which is another predecessor project of Detection 2. Detection 2 also has a better and more accurate implementation than our previous platforms. To understand what that means, we'll share an interesting piece of history. So when Detection 1 was released in 2018, the exact same mascar CM model gets about one point more accurate than what's reported in the mascar CM paper in 2017. The reason why this happened is just because an object detection system is too complicated. There are a lot of places where we can make tiny mistakes or make some suboptimal implementation decisions. There are a lot of tiny details that matter, for example, the Subtle differences, different library implement image resize actually matters. Issues like this are corrected over time. And by rewriting Detectron from ground up, we have the chance to revisit those issues. That's why in Detectron 2, we now see another gain in accuracy for exactly the same model, trained for the same amount of iterations by fixing some of those issues. Due to all these complicated details, reproducing the results of a detection model is not always easy. We publish the model zoo with standard models and reproducible results and hope that our implementation and our reference numbers can become a reference for the academic community. The model zoo also includes a few large state-of-the-art models that are used to generate the video demo so you can make the same thing by yourself. In the future, we will also add some optimized small models that, that can run more efficiently in production. More importantly, Detection 2 has a more 
modular architecture. So let's first take a look at what a standard object detection model looks like. This is a diagram for a typical generalized RCNN object detection framework. An input image first goes through a CNN backbone to extract some image features. Those features are used to predict region proposals, which are regions that are likely to contain objects. The features in those regions are cropped and warped into some regional features. Then different types of prediction heads use regional features and image features to predict bounding boxes, segmentation masks for each instance. And they also predict key points as well as dense posts for each human found in the image. It can predict semantic segmentation for the entire image. And all those predictions can be combined together to predict semantic segmentation. Oh, sorry, panoptic segmentation, which is a task that segments both instances as well as the background pixels. And it really gives us a complete understanding of every pixel in the image. This model was implemented in Detectron to following such an abstraction. However, we as researchers know that research is sometimes against abstraction. Research is, uh, research is about doing something in new ways, and it often breaks existing abstractions. That's why we've seen in the past that when we need to do something new, we were often modifying the source code of the underlying research platform directly. That's not too bad for research, but it doesn't sound like a good idea for maintenance. You can certainly still do this in Detectron 2, but Detectron 2 is also designed so that you don't have to do this. If you care about maintenance of your project, you can create new things without having to modify or fork its source code. You can import Detectron 2 as a library and build a thin layer of your own customizations on top of it. Using the registration system that we provided, you can replace its backbone or add a new type of head, use your own data sets, or customize other components in the system from the outside without having to touch its code. This makes it much easier for Detectron 2 users within Facebook to maintain their research and production projects. Such a modular design has, makes it easier to support a variety of research built on top of Detectron 2, in addition to the standard mask RCM model. Dance Post, as an example, it used to be released as a fork of Detection 1. But now this model can be built on top of Detection 2 by just import it and add a few extra layers. Some latest research papers from our team, including Panoptic FPN and TensorMask, are also coming together with Detection 2. Beyond 2D understanding, in a month, we will also release a source code for Mesh RCN, which is a model that are able to predict 3D structures of objects. Thanks to the flexible design, Detection 2 is also being used by many other teams at Facebook. By directly sharing the same underlying object detection code base, latest or sometimes even unpublished research can be transitioned into production at the earliest moment. Detection 2 models are currently running on many Facebook products that detect and segment different types of objects on billions of images. They run on servers and mobile phones and also on Facebook's portal device to power its smart camera. You may have seen the portal device. It has a camera that can automatically follow human actions. Deploying such a model in a compact and efficient runtime is still challenging for external users at the moment. And in the future, we will also integrate more closely with TorchScript to make deployment easier. That's all I have to say about Detection 2 today. You can learn more about it on our GitHub. It has a CoLab tutorial that you can indirectly train a model directly on there. And later this month, we will also hold a tutorial at ICCB 2019. Thank you.